Lately, there have been a number of alternative methods of doing SETI coming out from researchers seeking to broaden our ability to detect alien civilizations after decades of radio SETI that has, so far, proven fruitless. One such method is to look for stars that simply blink out with no natural explanation. But as anyone familiar with the concept of a Dyson Sphere knows, technology can dim a star or eventually block it completely, and that should be detectable in two ways. One is the act of construction progressively blocking the star's visible light until it blinks out, and the other is through infrared emissions from the sphere once it's completed. Both of these would have very distinct hallmarks as being technological rather than natural. It's debatable as to whether engineering would allow for the construction of a full, very large Dyson Sphere. In fact, the seemingly more plausible form of this kind of technology would be a swarm of structures rather than one monolithic object. But on the other hand, we really don't know yet, and there may be ways of solving the problems inherent to Dyson shells, especially if there's a superintelligence involved. One such type of superintelligence is a Dyson Sphere known as a Matryoshka brain. It is a computer that wishes to extract all possible energy from a star in order to make the highest number of calculations possible. For maximum efficiency, a series of nested spheres arranged like Russian Matryoshka dolls might be employed. Engineering and managing such a megastructure is far beyond us. We can merely envision a general view of it today, but it may be possible for an advanced superintelligence to construct. In the end, though, we simply don't know what a superintelligence could do. But one thing we do know is that any such monolithic Dyson Sphere technology would at least make a star disappear in visible light. And given that we've been doing star surveys for over 100 years now and have archives of data available, we can go back into those archives and search for stars that have disappeared and then go from there to try to determine why. Just such a study was done by Beatrice Villarol and colleagues at the University of Uppsala in Sweden last year, link in the description below. Using two different sky surveys, they looked at a sampling of hundreds of thousands of stars for evidence that any of the stars had vanished. In the end, they found one object that seems to have disappeared in the time between when the two surveys were taken. Unfortunately, this candidate turned out to be ambiguous, though it does seem to have disappeared, at least for now. The reason it was ambiguous was that certain things in the universe other than stars can drop in brightness dramatically and seem to disappear, such as quasars. The researchers couldn't pin down just what the object was, nor was it very consistent with a star disappearing behind a Dyson shell when they looked for it in other surveys for verification. So the question remains open, but it's highly unlikely that this was anything. This is somewhat of a long shot method of doing SETI, the authors admit. You really need a much larger sample spanning a much longer period of time to have any good likelihood of catching the construction of a Dyson Sphere, though there are tantalizing cases such as KSE 8462852. If that star blinks out at the end of the long term dimming trend, then a serious look at the Dyson Sphere possibility will be warranted. But individual stars might not be the only things to disappear due to the construction of Dyson spheres. Entire galaxies might vanish if a classical Kardashev Type III civilization were present and had taken control of its entire galaxy. These types of galaxies might only glow in the infrared and not emit much in the way of visible light, if any at all. Just such a search for this was conducted across the nearest 100,000 galaxies to the Milky Way by Roger Griffith, Jason Wright, and colleagues linked to the paper below. Unfortunately, no dead ringer candidate galaxies were found in the study, although they did find a bunch of anomalous galaxies warranting further study for both astrophysical and SETI reasons. The lack of good candidates so far for evidence of Dyson shells could mean that we haven't looked hard enough for them yet, or it might suggest that full-on Dyson spheres are not common in the universe. That can say many things, such as full Dyson spheres are not practical for anyone, despite having obvious uses. Or it might also suggest that intelligent, far-reaching civilizations are rare, but there is another possibility. We don't really have many models to envision what advanced alien civilizations might look like. We just have educated guesses based on our own behavior. The Kardashev scale, for example, is based on the assumption that an advanced alien civilization would seek ever-increasing amounts of energy as it expands, but this may need a rethink. It's possible that such an advanced alien civilization may look technologically very different from what we envision. We assumed that they would use massive amounts of energy in a way similar to how we think we will in the future. 
but do we really know for sure that's what they would do? Not really, and we ourselves currently have no plans for building a Dyson shell, though our solar orbiting spacecraft might qualify as the beginnings of a Dyson swarm of sorts. So if it turns out that Dyson shells are rare or non-existent, it doesn't really have much bearing on the possibility of intelligent alien life in the universe. It would just say that despite their obvious utility, Dyson shells are simply too hard to build. Or another possibility is that advanced civilizations use very little energy at all and instead become extremely efficient with miniaturized technology. So instead of galaxies spanning empires in the grain of Kardashev, maybe a single planet might provide everything an advanced civilization needs. Just food for thought. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, perhaps currently sounding a bit rough due to allergies, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channel for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.